Good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Alice Hilkina. I'm algal physiologist working on algal biotechnology right now. And I'm since um, start of BioAlgiso project and work on research on uh, algal physiology. So my talk is about, uh, will be about microalgae as a biorefinery and bioremediation solution. I work together with uh, Naomi Geneva and uh, Craig Pooley and Mikey Ross. So microalgae is photosynthetic organisms. We can, uh, they, they, they uh, live in a water environment. They need nutrient source for their metabolisms, carbon uh, source like CO2. It's photosynthetic organisms. They use sunlight for photosynthesis and they produce a lot of uh, different valuable uh, materials like starch, lipids, hydrogen. They use on bioremediation. We can extract high value products from these organisms and they can produce oxygen and carbon dioxide. We use different species in bioalgae soil project, like freshwater Senedesmus, Nanocoropsis oculata, it's marine species, Phyodactylum tricornutum, one of the diatoms, and Chlorella minutissima, green algae, what is good on bioremediation. Different systems have been used uh, for uh, delivery research on algal biology. It's tubular photobioreactor, raised way pond, and plastic bags. So all these different, different type of cultivation uh, have some advantages and disadvantages. For example, a uh, photobioreactor can be a, um, a really valuable low footprints, uh, sterile condition and really control of parameters. Raceway can provide high volume uh, of, um, uh, of production but really high uh, footprint. Plastic bag is really low uh, cost consumables and easy to cultivate, but a lot of human hours need to be used for, for operation. Algae uh, has particular conditions for cultivation. So we need to maintain temperature between 16 and 27 and with optimal range like 20 degrees. We have to maintain some certain level of salinity. Light intensity has to be provided because it's photosynthetic, photosynthetic organisms. And also, uh, photo period is quite important because um, some metabolic reaction needs to be finished in dark phase within the light phase active photosynthesis. pH has to be maintained as well because these organisms are quite sensitive. But I would like to say the microalgae can be adapted on different conditions as well. They also need to use nutrients some most important uh, macronutrients, it's nitrogen, phosphorus and carbon. Micronutrients, it's other minerals and vitamins. In this project, we are using nutrients from waste effluents. So we need to be sure that we have sufficient amount of nitrogen, phosphorus and carbon to support particular growth of microalgae and give high production. But also we need to control the low level of, of other parameters and other toxic nutrients can to be, uh, has been in waste nutrients. And also algae need to spend some time to adaptation for this particular environment. So uh, usually effluent what we use in this project, it was agriculture waste and waste from trout farm. So high reach uh, on uh, ammonium and also other source of bioavailable nitrogen it can be available, available on waste source. So for algae particular, um, ammonium is in the first step bioavailable nitrogen. After this, with help of bacteria, it can be uh, going to the nitrite and nitrate in the end. So all this uh, available uh, nitrogen can be consumed by algae. Uh, toxic amount of ammonia usually stop to grow other organisms, but not microalgae, because uh, maximizing uh, bioremediation effects can be provided through the photosynthesis. Algae need nitrogen because this is important um, uh, nutrients can provide and help to microalgae build some molecule, molecules like lipids, amino acids, and proteins. Another source of nutrients come from waste, it's phosphorus. 
Phosphates usually uh, was found in, in uh, waste effluents. We're using phosphates from trout farm waste and we have particular successful trials to, to grow microalgae and this particular waste. So different forms of phosphate can be found on waste and all of them what is listed algae can use. At low pH, um, equ equilibrium can shift toward more uh, particular HPO4 and less uh, PO4, um, this form of phosphorus. Some other molecules such as DNA, uh, energetic substances like ATP, phospholipids and uh, many other proteins can be built from source of phosphate. For this why this important nutrient source need to be used by algae and can be taken from waste. So um, to be able to use nutrient uh, from the waste, we need to base on the molecular weight and just calculate right amount for appropriate needs of microalgae. Like we use two different um, uh, source of uh, two different sources of waste, agricultural waste and trout waste. So based on molecular uh, weight and um, proportion and ratio we used in this study. So uh, in here we can see then uh, algae maintain successful growth in semi-continuous mode. Then uh, we can supply new nutrients in, sta in a stationary state of growth. Uh, in this graph, we can say the nutrients uptakes gradually for both of macronutrients compounds like uh, nitrogen and phosphorus. And also, a uh, good physiological rate, what is checked by photosynthesis, um, was received from these experiments. So algae can use waste source. They have high rate of nutrients uptake and they maintain healthy physiological state of culture. So this first uh, approach in biorefinery concept, uh, algae species used in photobioreactor with waste source provide the high, um, uh, high level of algae biomass, what will, will be used in other step of biorefinery. Then can be, um, algae biomass can, can be separate fractionate and used for different important um, steps like fuels, nanomaterials, pharmaceutical, uh, and nutrients, cosmetics, etc. So, thank you very much for your attention.